we can. Okay, Hare Krishna, Jaho. Jai, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, uh, so, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome to uh, His Holy Chandra Muli Maharaj's uh, daily Zoom call. And uh, Guru Maharaj has been talking about, um, uh, I'm sorry that I have not been able to uh, connect to the previous calls, but uh, Guru Maharaj has been um, you know, going through the pure devotional service, Madhya Leela. And uh, today we will be covering the uh, Madhya Leela, uh, chapter 22, uh, verse 22. Okay. Um, the, how's my camera look? Does it look it clear? Is, it's clear and good, Guru Maharaj. It's perfectly fine at the moment, yes. Okay. Is it? Uh, does it seem to be different than it normally is? Like a bigger... Yes, it is more clear. Maybe let me just um, uh, make my screen big. Okay, because I, I have a monitor now. I, so I'm wondering how that will affect the quality of... It, it is looking quite, um, uh, you know, um, a bigger picture and uh, uh, it's much clearer. I can, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. I think the, the monitor makes the difference, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, we can go to the verse. How many we have devotees online? We have only 10, maybe? We have, we have nine devotees online, Guru Maharaj. Okay, we'll begin. Okay, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dvaita Chandra, Jaya Gaur Bhakti Rinda, Sri Sutim Bhakti Mudasya Te Vavo, Dasyanti Ye Ke Vala Buddha Labdi Daya Daye, Dasyamma Samkle Sala Eva Shishya Te, Nanyad Yatat Stulam, Stufa Vagatinam. My dear Lord, devotional service unto you is the only auspicious path. If one gives that, it up simply for speculative knowledge or the understanding that these living beings are spirit soul and the material world is false, he undergoes a great trouble. He only gains great trouble and in his he endeavors are like beating a husk that is already devoid of rice, his labor becomes fruitless. Okay, next verse. Daiviyesha guna mai momo maya daratya yamame viye pupadyante maya tantarangti te. This divine energy of mind, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. Those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Krishna speaks from the Bhagavad Gita 714. Krishna Nitya Dasa, Jiva Tava Bula Gela, E Dosa Maya Tara, Galiya Bandila. The living entity is bound around the neck by the chain of Maya because he has forgotten that he is eternally a servant of Krishna. Tate Krishna Bajekare Guru Ra Sevana Maya Jale Chute Paya Krishnera Charana. If the conditioned soul engages in the service of the Lord and simultaneously carries out the orders of his spiritual master and serves him, he can get out of the clutches of Maya, become eligible for shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. Hmm. So that's verse number, which number is this we have here? Just 25. Let me just make a note of that. Yeah, 22, 25. Conditioned soul engages in the service of the Lord and simultaneously carries out the orders of his spiritual master and serves so he can get out of the clutches of mind and become eligible for shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. Purport. It is a fact that every living entity is eternally a servant of Krishna. This 
is forgotten due to the influence of Maya, which induces one to believe in material happiness. The illusion by Maya, one thinks that material happiness is the only desirable object. This material consciousness is like a chain around the neck of the conditioned soul. As long as he is bound to that conception, he cannot get out of Maya's clutches. However, by Krishna's mercy, he gets in touch with a bona fide spiritual master and abides by his orders and serves him, engaging other conditioned souls in the Lord's service that he attains liberation and the Lord and Lord Sri Krishna's shelter. Migyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Garavena Mahanama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pachari Nainir Visesa Sukhi Varadi Pasta Yene so uh, devotional service is the constitutional position of all living beings. Jivir, Sarupai, Krishnera, Nichidas. All living entities are part and parcel of Krishna. Nityo Nityanam, Chaitanas, Chaitananam, Eko Bahavanam, Viridati, Kamam. By nature, we are spiritual but we live within the material tabernacle, which is called the material body. And we live in a world of matter. Matter is a world of change. One of the main symptoms of the material energy is it's always changing. Or it's always uh, evolving or revolving or devolving, moving in different directions according to the supremacy of whatever particular energy is, is prominent. For instance, when the mode of goodness is prominent, people tend to be top pious, religious, charitable, and um, develop what we say acceptable qualities. When the mode of passion is prominent, people struggle hard in order to uh, achieve something from their activities some remuneration, some success, and that is the mode of passion, our struggle. When the mode of ignorance is prominent, the living entity is in illusion, he's ignorant, he doesn't know what to do, or what not to do, his activities are de detrimental to himself and to others. So these three modes are like chains. His, as Prabhupada says, material consciousness is like a chain around the neck of the conditioned soul. And that consciousness is the constant movement of these three uh, energies, sattva gun, raja gun, and tama gun. And the modes are also called gunas. The word guna also has a particular meaning. Another word, another meaning for the word guna, synonymous, is rope. So a material mode is a guna, and, a, and a, a guna is also a rope. So we know that a rope is meant to bind or tie up. So the living entity is tied up by the desires that they have, which forces them to act according to a particular desire, and which gives them a particular result, and therefore they struggle, and they get a combination of good, they, uh, they get a, a, not a combination, but they get various types of results, either good, bad, or a mixture of both, depending on where their energy is focused in within the material energy. But the, material, the living entity is not a material body. Um, uh, that verse from the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, 
as if as the embodied soul travels from boyhood to youth to old age. Similarly, the soul passes into another body at death, the self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. So these uh, bodies that we have are like chains or prison houses that we accept according to our particular desire to enjoy the material world. Uh, the person who is pious will get a good body, uh, born in a good family with uh, many good qualities. People who are impious will get a body that is maybe not so good, subject to disease, uh, not, not very attractive. Maybe the material surroundings will be one of impoverishment and various types of difficulties that come. And someone in between maybe get a combination of both of these at different times. So um, one cannot get out of the clutches of the material energy, as Prabhupada said, as long as one acts within the material energy. Uh, as soon as one connects with the material energy and performs an activity, automatically a result is given. And at the same time, it sets the stage for the same activity to reoccur in the future. In other words, the tendency that the living entity develops is, uh, is perpetual. And therefore, uh, the living entity keeps going one material activity after another, trying to get out of the difficulties that it comes by these activities and therefore it struggles uselessly. And therefore, and this says, when one meets the spiritual master, and accepts the shelter of the spiritual master. One meets the spiritual master by one's good fortune. What is that for good fortune? It cannot be described, but it's causeless. Causeless means that um, one cannot see or even search out how one has somehow or other come in contact with the bona fide spiritual master. It comes automatically by Krishna's arrangement based on the living entity's desires. And somehow or other, uh, of course, even others get a chance to come in contact with a spiritual master, but cannot recognize the benefit, as it says here. If one is still has the chains of material consciousness around their neck, they may be face to face with God himself, but still they cannot uh, cannot uh, uh, see the benefit of that. Prabhupada tells the story of one old lady. She used to carry these heavy loads through the woods and sometimes over different, and uh, these loads were part of her personal belongings and she had to do this regularly. So one day she was struggling with this heavy load and she uh, she was praying, oh, my dear Lord, help me, help me. I'm struggling with this heavy load. And so uh, her prayers were very sincere. And Krishna appeared to her and said, what, what do you want? She said, oh, you've come. Well, can you help me? Can you pick up this load and put it back on my back? In other words, she couldn't recognize the benefit of being in the association of the Supreme Lord. And she simply asked for the load of material life to be repositioned so she again could struggle with that. You know, that's the condition. So they don't really want to get out of the material energy. They just want them, they want God to help them uh, with their material uh, plans and uh, to make their material plans more successful or more easily executable. That is the condition. So, but if somehow or other one starts to see the futility of material life and starts to awaken to that, then, then, then that is the beginning of uh, human form of life. Then they question. And when they question, then Krishna sends someone to help answer their questions, and that is his representative, the bona fide spiritual master. And by taking shelter 
It says here in the purport, if by, by Krishna's mercy, one gets in touch with a bona fide spiritual master, getting in touch doesn't mean just, you know, you're going to a dinner and he's there and you're there and you shake hands and exchange a few nice words. No, what is that coming in contact means? Abiding by his orders because the spiritual master only has one business. What is that business? The business is to enlighten. I'm sorry, devotees. I think Guru Maharaj is just dis um, got disconnected, and uh, uh, we will wait till he joins back. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, um, uh, you're on mute, I think. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj, clear. Yeah, I'm sorry, my computer decided to go into hibernation. That's so, fine, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Okay. And um, so abiding by his order, because that's what his, his service is to the Supreme Lord, is to give two things. He gives practical guidance on how to live life in devotional service. And he also gives spiritual teachings, philosophical knowledge about the relationship of the living entity with the Supreme Lord and how to develop that relationship through the process of bhakti yoga. And then the details on how to, be, to, to achieve that is his instructions, or as it says here, his order. Now, the spiritual master is the bona fide representative of Krishna. And so when one serves the spiritual master, the spiritual master takes that service and offers to Krishna on behalf of that devotee. He doesn't keep anything from himself. His, his job is to simply be a medium, as it's explained, a transparent medium between the Lord and the uh, living entities. So he takes our mixed devotional service and offers it to Krishna, and Krishna will accept based on the uh, position of the spiritual master. And that way one connects with Krishna in devotional service. So Abiding by his order is the process of connecting with Krishna through the instructions of the spiritual master. And then when one follows that and develops a relationship with the spiritual master based on, based on serving the orders of the spiritual master, and one develops a relationship with Krishna directly, and one can uh, associate with Krishna through the instructions and the activities that lead, that are the results of the instructions uh, from the spiritual master. So it's a very uh, streamlined process <laughs> and uh, it's all based on, because uh, the living entity is defiant of the Lord, Otherwise, why would we be, be here in the material world? Because we are rebelling against the Lord. And the Lord has a particular desire for each and every one of us, which is, the, which is our benefit, our eternal benefit. But we don't see that, nor can we understand why it's like that. 
So when we accept that and act in that way, then that relationship again starts to develop. And the spiritual master simply is that media by which we connect to the spiritual. And the more we engage in devotional service, the more we can feel the direct connection with Krishna through the activities of devotional service. But one always stays connected through to Krishna through the instructions of the spiritual master. And that is the job, service of the spiritual master is to enlighten one in the process of devotional service. And you're not this body. You have been in the material world for so many lifetimes. Um, and now you're in this particular situation, whether it's good materially or not, is incidental or ephemeral, doesn't really matter, is um, a good material situation can work in two ways. It can bring one closer to Krishna or it can cause one to be farther away from Krishna, being more illusioned by the success of one's so-called material happiness. We see the example of um, Jagai and Marai, who were very sinful, but somehow got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And then eventually, that their mercy carried to Lord Chaitanya. And ultimately, they became pure devotees. And we see even in our Krishna conscious movement, many of the practitioners who, who joined Srila Prabhupada in the old days were quite degraded in their behavior and habits. But somehow or other, they were fortunate enough to recognize that here is something that will be my, to my benefit. And because of that, they, um, they accepted Srila Prabhupada and because of Prabhupada's purity, they were attracted to him and due to the attraction for them, him, he got us attracted to Krishna. The attraction to the spiritual master helps us to develop attraction for Krishna. We may have some, some sentimental attraction for Krishna or some preliminary attraction for Krishna, or maybe because of previous births, we have some the genuine attraction to Krishna. But in any case, it, ha it can only move forward in a practical way through the spiritual master's guidance. So here, and Prabhupada add, seeks to add, and he says, one who binds by the order of the spiritual master and serves the spiritual master, engaging other conditioned souls in the Lord's service. So here's an extra feature of that relationship. And one thinks, well, I have now I'm connected to Krishna through the spiritual master. And there are other persons who are not. Let me uh, let me be uh, let me assist my spiritual master by trying to make others. Krishna conscious also. And as it says here, when he does that, then he attains to the platform of liberation and the Lord's shelter, which are one who receives the Lord's shelter, as we have been explaining in the previous discussions, it automatically receives liberation. Liberation is one's birthright, according to um, Shastra, which explains that one who engages in devotional service, mukti, liberation, bhukti, material happiness, are there waiting to serve the, that particular living entity in any way they can, or any way that living entity desires. And that's simply Krishna's reciprocation, like that. But the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet is the perfection. What is that? And one is no longer feeling the anxiety of struggling in the material world. One is sheltered. Sometimes we use a very simple, but very, say, you, have, you live in a house. And your home is very dear to you. So somehow you go on a trip and you're traveling for a long time. And you wind up going to different places and meeting different people. You may be finding some happiness in there. But then again, you finally come back to your home and then you go into your bed, the place in your home where you feel the most comfortable. And then you think, oh, it's so nice to be home again. <laughs> it's 
especially if the trip was difficult or arduous or in any way. And when you return home, you think, oh, I just feel more secure, more safe, more happy. So we use that analogy when returning home, return means returning back to the lotus feet of Krishna. And eventually that manifests itself in going back home, back to the spiritual world. That's why it says back home, back to Godhead, not just back to Godhead, back home, back to Godhead. This is our, uh, this is actually our real home, the spiritual world, because we are different than this particular body that we have. But people are so attached to their bodies that um, they require much understanding and sometimes strong lessons to wake them up from that situation that, hey, you're not this body. What happens to the body is not happening to you. Sometimes you get sick and you feel the difficulties and pains of the disease. But you also know it's not happening to me, it's happening to my body. But because I'm in the body, it's a concern. Therefore, I have to keep my body in a good situation so I can execute my devotional service nicely. And to want to preserve the body is natural because the soul finds uh, shelter within a particular type of body. But to become attached to that shelter and become attached to that body is the, is the process of again taking birth in one, one lifetime after another. So just as we use something, say we use a frying pan for cooking, um, in order to cook, you need some kind of pan, so or pot or something. But it's not that that pot is so important that you know you 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 can't give it up and you can't leave it or you carry it with you every moment. No, the material body is also very useful because to get a human form of life is rare. And that's mentioned throughout the scriptures, that to come to the human form of life after many millions of births in other species of life is a rare opportunity. And even rarer is to meet a bona fide spiritual master. Rarer than that is to engage in devotional service. Rarer than that is to uh, to five to achieve the success of devotional service and even rarer than that is to perfect devotional service. So um, uh, we have been given the opportunity of something that is very rare and very valuable. Uh, what is that eternal life in the spiritual world with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, which is we're full of knowledge and unlimited and variegated forms of transcendental pleasure. That is the spiritual world. It's not like the material world. Sometimes we think, is there a place like that where there's happiness all the time? Yes, because it also indicates that that place exists simply by our desire to be happy always. We want to be happy always. And that is an indication it's natural. And therefore, since it's natural, there must be a place where we can find that eternal happiness. And it does exist, but not in this material world, in the spiritual world. Okay, so these are some of the things we can consider on these verses here. So we can stop here and maybe open it up for questions. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you um, uh, for the uh, class and uh, by your permission and uh, blessing, I would just uh, summarize the class. Uh, so the class started with devotional service that what is our uh, living entity's constitutional position is. Uh, then Guru Maharaj spoke about um, uh, three modes of material nature and uh, how consciousness is you know, uh, connecting all of the modes. 
then uh, uh, how how a uh, one living entity can you know uh, uh, connect oneself to the spiritual master and come in the shelter of the spiritual master so uh, guru maharaj mentioned two things that um, uh, one by the krishna's arrangement and second is by living entity's desire uh, to get, get connected to the krishna and and to get come in the shelter of spiritual master uh, then uh, uh, guru maharaj mentioned that uh, one can come in the shelter and serve a spiritual master by abiding by his rules uh, by by his orders and uh, guru Ma, uh, sorry spiritual master can give you personal guide you know practical guidance and spiritual teachings on the philosophical knowledge then um, a, a spiritual master should be a bona fide representative of krishna and uh, one can offer our services through a spiritual master to krishna uh, rather than directly and uh, so there is one more thing um, uh, Guru Maharaj mentioned that uh, it's not just only serving a spiritual master in Krishna, it's about engaging others in Krishna's service and uh, how one can, uh, you know, become a, a, a free of anxiety and be always happy and uh, can go back to Krishna. Uh, so this is just, um, uh, forgive me my, uh, uh, my ignorance if I miss something, it's just a very high level summary. And uh, uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask questions, um, uh, your realization, comments, anything, or you can and type we, in the chat box. Yeah, it's, it's the, the host has to encourage the devotees to put, turn on their cameras during this question and answer period. Yes, yeah. So please um, uh, do switch on your camera if you can, if you're, uh, you know, uh, if you're comfortable then, and uh, um, while you're asking questions. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, so while we are waiting, Guru Maharaj, I would like to ask one question um, about, you know, when you mentioned that uh, a living entity uh, will come in contact with a spiritual master by Krishna's arrangement or a living entity's desire. Uh, so many a times, like, you know, uh, when we go out and when we see in our friends and family and uh, many in our context, basically, that they have no knowledge of Krishna. And uh, they don't even, they're living in ignorance, basically, and they do not know that, you know, they, they need to have a spiritual master, or they need to progress. So there is someone, something called a spiritual world. So how, what will be, what will happen to this type of living entities when they, who are in complete ignorance? But they have to keep taking birth according to their material situation. This is called the wheel of birth and death, samsara. And uh, one cannot get out of that cycle. Karanam gunasangasyo sarasadjoni jandasu. One goes from different planetary systems up and down, depending on their material karmic uh, collective state at the time of death, then they get a particular body. And as long as they stay in the material energy and try to enjoy the material energy, this cycle is repeating over and over again. Sometimes in a good body, sometimes not. And we see the Prabhupada says, no one can guarantee what kind of body they'll get in the next life. Sometimes even one is pious, but they did something impious, they may also find themselves in a very awkward situation in the next life. A very material, difficult situation in the next life. Just like we see, and this is very fashionable nowadays, people are very much attached to their dogs. At least my experience is everywhere you go, I, when every time I go out of the house, somebody's walking their dog. And in the summertime, you see so many people, tens and twenty, hundreds of people, all with dogs on leashes, going in different places in the parks, on the streets, like that. 
And people get so attached to their dog and they put so much time and energy in taking care of their dog. They actually develop affection for their dog. And the next life, they become a dog. So yeah, they had a human life, but they wasted it. And now they get a dog life. So, so uh, Guru Maharaj, I, I, so this journey continues, like, you know, this cycle continues. But like, for example, we have, uh, you know, many of Scon temples run the Food for Life program, you know, where, where we distribute prashad. So when this, you know, this ignorant, you know, public, they, when they have prashad, do you think their journey starts from that point onwards? Well, it could either start or continue. Could have continued from that point. You know, they may have had something in the previous, in the previous experience in some birth or even in this birth. And then now they're just continuing, that's all. Mm -hmm. Or it may be initially something that's come by way of first experience. You can't say it's not possible to understand where a person was previously. You get a little indication by their piety or their impiety, but uh, ultimately you don't know. Because there are agyata sukriti, agyata sukriti means someone who has performed devotional service unknowingly, either in this life or in the previous life. And that, that accredits them with again, coming in contact with the devotee. And if they take advantage of that, then they can make progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so I, I really want to ask one more question related to this, Guru Maharaj, that, you know, one of my, um, 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 one of the devotee who went out for distribution, book distribution, and uh, she was she was doing door-to-door -door book distribution, and she was just knocking on all the doors, and no one opened the door. But what she was doing is she was standing outside the door, and she just, she was just chanting. So she was asking me that, uh, does, does that help? Just chanting in their you know courtyard and uh, you know praying to krishna that krishna please come and help even though that person opens the door and being very rude and shuts the door onto you <laughs> so what do you think guru maharaj i don't know i was not sure i said i will ask my guru maharaj a gyata sukriti means unknowingly doing devotional service. That's not devotional service, obviously. Okay, yes. Yes. Um, if one sees a devotee and appreciates the devotee for being a devotee, that is also a gyata sukriti. Okay. But if one is a mimical, that doesn't mean that they're going to get any benefit from that. Okay. But if somehow they, if they chant a holy name, even if they say, oh, you Krishnas are nonsense, then they get some benefit for saying Krishna. Right? Okay. Yeah, this helps. Okay. This is very good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. No, no. Nobody likes to turn on their cameras. Everybody is I can... hiding, <laughs> hiding. For some reason, my, my camera button is not working. I'm trying to keep pressing it again and again, but it doesn't seem to be clicking on. <laughs> okay. Others, please. I'm, I'm just talking to a bunch of names. I can't see. All I see is names. <laughs> This is called Gupta program. Everyone is hiding. <laughs> so devotees, please carry on. So, can ask questions. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji, I have a question. Manavananda has got a question, right? Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, Guru Baharaj, uh, that uh, to interrupt somebody. I, I didn't know who, who I interrupted. Please accept my humble obeisances of glories to Shiva Prabhupada, of glories to you and to the assembled devotees, devotees here. Uh, I wanted to ask you one question. 
about we, we mentioned now Prasadam and Mahaprasadam, but how, how much the impact do we have? I've, I've heard you already spoke in your lectures that we use Prasadam to soften up uh, <laughs> uh, other, others to, to get to preaching to them. But do we know the impact of Prasadam or Mahaprasadam? Because sometimes it's the only way that we preach. So, well, it says that and one who, even if one takes Mahaprasadam once in their life, they're guaranteed a human birth in the next life. That's the power of Mahaprasadam. So it saves them from gravitating down to a lower birth. So that's very powerful. But if they consistently come in contact with prasadam, and then after some time, they will start to be more receptive to you know, the philosophy or the association of devotees. It works in that way gradually. But it's always beneficial because maha prasadam is Krishna. It's Krishna in transcendental footsteps. It's quite, it's powerful, but it's subtle. You can't see the results so easily, but it comes in time. Yes, thank you very much, Maharaj. Yeah, so we'll distribute prasadam. We, we even distribute prasadam to, uh, to the animals. So if they take prasadam, and that will guarantee them a human birth in the next life. So it's, it's really a mercy a program to distribute Krishna. And for those who live in family life, it's required that each day they feed someone Krishna. If you somehow do not feed someone, it could be a family member, it could be any, any living entity, then you are you're not fulfilling your role as a as a grihasta. You have to somehow or other find someone somewhere, even the ants within the holes of the room. Someone has to get prashadam regular one, one at least one one living entity a day you have to somehow benedict. That's that's one of the uh, regulations or uh, rules for a grihasta. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Yes, um, and they've done the um, uh, Prabhu. You have a question? Yes, yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, is there any difference uh, between to honor prasadam at the temple and to honor the same prasadam at home? Um, well, prasadam is absolute, but then again, the devotion of the cooks is what inspires Krishna to take the prasadam. So the more devotion, the more Krishna is attracted to that prasadam or that food that you offer, which eventually becomes prasadam. So it's not so much temple or home, it's the devotion of the cooks. Uh, no, uh, the question is, to um, honor the same prasadam, uh, the temple prasadam. Uh. Well, the temple prasadam, people are following more strictly the rules and regulations for cooking and for offering. So there, you might say that that is superior in that sense. At home, we might not follow the, the proper cleanliness principles, and whatever else is needed. So uh, the temple is in a better position because it follows more strictly the Pancharachuki system for cooking and offering prasadam. 
I'm sorry for my pure, pure English. Uh, to, the question is uh, to uh, is there a difference uh, to honor temple prasadam in the temple and uh, taking this, this the same prasadam to home and honor it at home? Oh, oh, whether you eat it at the temple or eat it at home? Yes, yes, no, the same prasadam, temple it's prasadam. Is, it's the same, yeah. It's the same, okay. Yeah, it's not going to change because you brought it to your home. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, the Mataji, uh, you had a question? Uh, yes, Mataji, thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, Dhanapurana Gurmaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, so, Gurmaj, my question is about uh, modes. So, like uh, when we connect to spiritual master, it's you, um, it's by Krishna's arrangement and your desire. So, that means like uh, when we connect to spiritual master, that means we have um, elevated, we have come to the mode of goodness. Should you understand like that? Not necessarily, no. Okay. It's simply if you come to the spiritual master, there it's just an, it's just mercy, that's all. Mm -hmm. Any living entity can come to the spiritual master and by the mercy of the spiritual master. Even even the jagais and malais. Doesn't mean they're in the mode of goodness. In this age, how many people are in the mode of goodness? Most of the people are in the mode of passion and ignorance. But still, they become eligible if they recognize that here's something that I should follow. And they, they adhere to the instructions and become enthusiastic to follow. And they can raise themselves up. So we, the, the preachers, the gurus, and those who preach don't discriminate. Oh, these people are in the mode of goodness, so they should get the mercy, and these people are in the mode of passion, they shouldn't get it. No, they don't, yeah. The rain falls on the rocks, the rain falls on the ocean, the rain falls on the, the fertile ground. So rain will fall everywhere, but it's only needed on the fertile ground, not on the rocks or on the ocean. But still, the rain is there. So the mercy is always available. And those who take it, therefore, they're, they're benefited. They're fortunate. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so just uh, connected to that question, Guru Maharaj, like, uh, so if just like I uh, was listening to your classes, so uh, re-listening to your classes, so everything is like uh, related to, uh, to the state of your consciousness, right? So on all the modes. And uh, we develop these modes based on our activities, Guru Maharaj. I'm just like uh, trying to understand. Desi desires cause activities. Activities bring results. And results bring one to different levels of consciousness. So it starts with desire. Everything's based on desire. What is your desire? That way, when you have a desire, you'll act according to that desire. And that desire may be in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance, or a combination of these different modes. So the desire is the, is the force that causes us to think and act in a certain way. If you, you, you cannot change your life simply by changing your activities, you have to change your desires. Okay. People try to change their life by uh, changing their activities, but unless they change their desire, the activities will remain the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to... Um, uh, like focus on our desires, like you know, desire. Yeah. Should be what is my desire? Do I want Krishna, or do I want some happiness in this material world, mm -hmm. or do I want a combination of both? I like Krishna, but I like Maya also. Mm -hmm. So 
So then you then if you're if you find yourself in that situation, then where do you place your attention on Krishna on on those desires in the material world? The more you place your attention on Krishna, the stronger he becomes in your in your life, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it depends where you're going to place your attention on. Okay, yeah. very nice, Kumar. Very beautiful. So desire for Krishna, um, the stronger, uh, the stronger we'll progress. And the desire will lead to the activity. Activities, yeah. So activities will lead to results, right? Yeah. Yeah, certain results, and the results will uh, formulate. A particular consciousness which will lead to the another activity mm -hmm. similar activity generally mm -hmm. so the more we desire krishna the more we serve krishna the more we become krishna conscious and the more we become krishna conscious the more we act in in devotional service mm -hmm. yes so make your desire Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. I want Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. And Krishna, yeah, Krishna will help you if you want him. But if you want Maya, then and you'll have to struggle to get Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sudha Mataji. Uh, so, uh, Guru Maharaj, there is a question from Namrita Mataji um, on the chat. Yeah. She is saying, uh, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Guru and Gauranga. Uh, yeah. What is the difference between Vaiti Bhakti and Raga Bhakti? Who is asking the question? Namrita. Namrita Mataji. Oh, okay. What is the, what is the difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raga Bhakti. Well, mm, Sadhana Bhakti contains Vaidhi Bhakti and Raga Nuga Bhakti. It's two features of, of Sadhana Bhakti. The first is following rules and regulations according to the instructions of the spiritual master and executing activities in that way. When that is done regularly, one develops the taste for it. When the taste comes, then one no longer simply, simply uh, follows, but they are naturally attracted to the activity. When that natural attraction reaches a certain level of development, then it becomes spontaneous or natural. And then it's not no, no longer just rules and regulations, but it becomes a part of one's consciousness. So if, if I tell you, become attracted to this, and here's how you do it, okay. But then again, now you've developed that attraction, so I don't have to tell you anymore. It, it becomes natural. That's Raghunuga Bhakti, the spontaneous devotional service, which is the nature of the soul. The soul has to go to spontaneous devotional service in order to reach Krishna. It cannot stay on Vaidhi Bhakti rules and regulations. Uh, all right, I'll go to the temple because it's good for me. Oh, now, now it's no longer thinking like that. I can't wait to get to the temple. So there's a difference between just doing something because we should do it and or doing something because we are attracted to the activity. That is the difference between Vaidhi and Radha and Vaidhi. And Namrata Mataji, do you have any other questions? Uh, I hope this uh, answers your question. Yeah, she said, thank you, Maharaj, that clarifies. Uh, devotees, uh, please let us know if you have any other questions. We have five, still five minutes to uh, for this call. So Guru Maharaj can take a question maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Sumitra, how are you? 
Oh, fine, thank you. Just, uh, just uh, am I on? No. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, tomorrow we are celebrating uh, Divya Simha, my son's birthday. So I'm preparing the cake for him, for friends. So in a kitchen. Which 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 boy is that? First, second, or third? The second, the second one. The second. Second one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two days ago, it was his birthday on seventh, on seventh of December. So we had the company with devotees, and tomorrow is with his school friends. So. Tell, 